My life took an unexpected turn a few years ago when I decided to embrace Buddhism as my spiritual guide. Raised in a traditional American family, spirituality had always been something peripheral, a collection of religious practices observed more out of habit than genuine conviction. But like many others, my life had been marked by ups and downs, and over time I felt the need to find a deeper meaning, something that went beyond the superficialities of daily life. It was during a period of personal crisis when I had lost my job and an important relationship that I turned to meditation. Initially, it was just an attempt to find some peace amidst the chaos, but soon it became much more. Attending a Buddhist center in Seattle, I began practicing with greater intensity, learning about the sutras, meditating regularly, and trying to live according to the Buddha's teachings. I was fascinated by the idea of detachment, non-attachment to material things, and the importance of living in the present. I was particularly drawn to the philosophy that sees life as a cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, samsara, from which one can only be liberated by reaching nirvana the state of enlightenment and liberation from the cycle of suffering. These teachings changed my way of seeing the world, offering me a sense of inner peace I had never known before. That September night was like many others I had spent since beginning my spiritual journey. After finishing work, I decided to take a walk in the park near my house, a small corner of nature in the midst of the city. As I walked, I reflected on the Buddha's words, trying to internalize them. I felt a certain serenity in understanding that everything, every experience, every emotion was destined to pass, like the leaves falling from the trees in autumn. But while my heart was filled with peace, my body had other plans. Without warning, a searing pain struck my chest, causing me to lose my balance. It was as if an invisible hand had grabbed my heart and squeezed it tightly. I tried to take a deep breath, but the pain increased with each inhale. I bent forward, trying to hold on to something, but the world around me became blurred, the lights dimmed, and I felt my knees give way. I collapsed to the ground, the damp grass beneath me, and as I tried to stay conscious, I felt a strange sense of detachment. It was as if my body was no longer mine, as if I were an external observer, distant. In those last moments of awareness, my world darkened, and all that remained was a deep sense of emptiness. When I reopened my eyes, my first thought was that I must be dead. I was standing next to my body, lying on the grass. I could clearly see my inert body, the rigid features, the chest that no longer rose. There was no sign of life, yet I was there, conscious, but separated from my physical body. I looked around, confused. The park was silent but there was something different in the air. It wasn't just the lack of sound, it was as if time itself had slowed down, as if the world was suspended in an eternal twilight. The shadows were longer, darker, and everything seemed wrapped in a kind of ethereal mist. Then, without warning, I felt an invisible force grab me, pulling me away from my body. It wasn't a physical movement, but rather a sensation of being drawn toward another dimension as if I were passing through a thin veil that separated two worlds. The view of the park faded, and I found myself immersed in a deep darkness, a starless night that seemed endless. After what seemed like an eternity, my eyes adjusted to the darkness, and I slowly began to see details around me. I was in a place that looked like an endless desert, but the ground wasn't sandy. It was hard, rocky and had an almost metallic appearance. The sky above me was a deep red, as if it were permanently at sunset, and a spectral light dimly illuminated the environment. There was an air of desolation and despair that permeated everything. In the distance, I saw figures moving. As I approached, I began to see them more clearly. They were men and women practicing martial arts. But there was something strange about the way they moved. Every gesture, every strike, every block was executed with extreme precision, but something was missing. The soul. Their eyes were empty, devoid of any light or inner life, as if they were automatons programmed to repeat the same movements endlessly. These martial artists were not simple warriors. 
As I got closer, I began to recognize some of their features. They were masters, men and women who had achieved extraordinary heights in their disciplines during their lives. Every gesture they made was perfect, but it was devoid of purpose. The entire scene was imbued with a sense of torment, as if they were prisoners of their own abilities, condemned to repeat those movements for eternity. I approached one of them, a man who seemed to have been a great master in life. His face was marked by wrinkles, and his eyes, though empty, bore the signs of ancient suffering. Why are you here? I asked, my voice resonating strangely in the dense, heavy air. The man stopped for a moment, his gaze shifting to me, but he seemed not to truly see me. We are here because we lost our way, he replied, with a voice that seemed to come from a distant place. In life we sought perfection, but we forgot our spirit. We allowed pride, anger, and the desire for power to take over, and now we are condemned to eternally relive our mistakes. His words struck me deeply. It was as if he was speaking not only of himself, but of a universal truth. I understood that it was not their skill in martial arts that had condemned them, but rather the fact that they had lost sight of the true purpose of their practice. They had cultivated the ego instead of compassion, and now they were prisoners of their own obsessions. As I continued to explore that infernal desert, a distinct figure approached me. Unlike the others, this figure seemed to have a different awareness, an aura of wisdom that set them apart. They stopped in front of me and their eyes, unlike the others, were full of light and compassion. It seems you have much to learn here, said the figure with a calm and reassuring voice. This is not a place for the living, but there is a reason you have been allowed to see all this. Who are you? I asked, feeling a mixture of respect and fear. It does not matter who I am, the figure replied, but rather what you can learn from this experience. You see, many think of hell as a physical place of punishment, but the reality is more complex. Hell is a state of being, a manifestation of our inner sufferings. These warriors were not condemned here by some external force. They themselves created their hell through the choices they made, the emotions they nurtured, and the attachments they failed to let go of. I listened carefully, trying to fully understand the meaning of their words. So hell is within us, I said slowly, trying to make sense of everything I was experiencing. Yes, the figure replied, and it is also in your power to avoid creating the same fate for yourself. The key is detachment, you do not have to abandon your passions, but you must practice them with a mind free of selfish desires. Only then can you avoid falling into this cycle of suffering. At that moment, the figure approached me and touched my chest. A sudden vision struck me. I saw myself sitting in meditation, but not in my usual place. I was in a temple I did not recognize, with a scar on my chest, a symbol that burned with an intense light. I felt a deep sense of peace, as if I had found something precious, something I had sought for a long time without knowing it. Before I could ask for an explanation about the vision, I felt a force pulling me back. The figure looked at me with a gentle smile and said, It is time for you to return, but remember what you have seen. Life is short, and the choices you make will shape your future, both in this life and the next. In an instant, I found myself back in my body, lying on the grass in the park. The pain in my chest was gone, but I still felt the presence of the figure's touch on my chest, as if a part of that experience had remained with me. I slowly got up, still confused and shaken by what I had experienced. The park was quiet, as if nothing had happened, but I knew that something inside me had changed forever. I stood up, and as I walked home, the vision I had continued to echo in my mind. I had to find that temple, understand the meaning of the scar and the symbol. It was like a call, a summons to something greater than myself. In the days and weeks that followed, I began searching for that temple. I asked Buddhist monks and scholars, consulted books and maps, but no one seemed to recognize the place I had seen in my vision. But I did not give up. I felt that this search was part of my path. 
that finding that place would mean fully understanding the lesson I had learned in hell. During this time, my spiritual practice intensified. It wasn't just a matter of meditating more often or reading more sutras. I had started looking within myself with greater attention, identifying my attachments, my fears, and my weaknesses. Every day was a challenge, but also an opportunity for growth. One day, while meditating, the vision returned. This time the scar on my chest burned intensely and I clearly saw the symbol, an ancient Sanskrit character representing the word mater, which means loving kindness. I understood then that the temple was not just a physical place but represented a state of being, a place within me where I could cultivate love and compassion, not only for myself, but for all living beings. In the end, I found the temple. It was hidden in the hills outside Seattle, a small monastery where an elderly monk named Kenpo Rinpoche lived. As soon as I set foot in the temple, I felt a deep connection to the place. It was as if I had been there before, even though I had never visited it in my life. Rinpoche welcomed me with a gentle smile, and without needing words, he led me to a small meditation hall. We've been expecting you, he said simply, as if he already knew everything about me. The journey has been long, but you have arrived where you needed to be. As I sat in meditation, I felt a profound peace, the same peace I had felt in my vision. The scar on my chest still burned, but this time it was not physical pain. It was a sensation of openness, as if something inside me had finally awakened. Rinpoche spoke to me about the importance of mater, of love and compassion as the keys to liberation. He taught me that true Buddhist practice is not just a personal quest but a commitment to live for the benefit of others, to spread peace and understanding wherever one goes. From that day on, my life changed radically. I was no longer the same man I was before the hellish experience. I had seen hell. But more than that I had understood that hell was something we could avoid through the practice of compassion and detachment. The vision of the temple, the symbol, and the scar became the guiding force of my life. I began teaching others what I had learned, not as a master, but as a simple practitioner who had been fortunate enough to see beyond the veil of illusion. I organized meditation retreats, gave lectures, and started writing about my experience, hoping that my story could help others avoid the same mistakes. Every day I still sit in meditation but with a deeper understanding. Each breath is a reminder of impermanence, and each action an opportunity to practice loving-kindness. The symbol of Mater is etched in my mind and heart, a constant reminder to live according to the principles of the Dharma. I have found peace, not by trying to escape the world, but by embracing it with compassion. And I know that as long as I hold on to this vision, I will never end up in the hell I saw, but will continue my path toward liberation carrying with me the teachings I received in that dark place. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to read this story to the end. The message it carries is crucial, and now I ask you to do your part. Share it as much as possible so that more people can be aware of what is happening. A simple gesture is enough. A like and a comment with Amen. Do not underestimate the importance of your contribution, because every small action can make a big difference. Together we can spread this truth.